Alright, coming in at number 10, we have fake clouds. You what? How can you fake a cloud? It is thought that meteorologists at Area 51 are thought to have experimented with cloud seeding in order to help solve the country's water issue. The theory is here that chemicals are dropped into clouds from planes to try and make them produce rain. Like, please rain. Other theories say that science buffs at Area 51 are actually trying to mass produce hurricanes and storms so they can send them as weapons into enemy countries, which I think is a bit extreme. People think that the government could be trying to harness the power of natural disasters. How can an enemy retaliate to a tsunami when they don't know that it was America's fault? I don't know though. So is the government testing weather control at Area 51? Would they unleash controlled weather events across their own country? Maybe. This also kind of reminds me of the whole chemtrails conspiracy theory. Didn't that have to do with something about planes and chemicals? Hmm. Coming into number 9, we have secret transport. Another theory is that the United States government has created a secret underground high speed transportation system that runs in tunnels across America. A number of people have suggested that there are high speed railways underground connecting far flung parts of the country. Theorists also say that there is a secret runway for planes known as the Cheshire Airstrip. This is named after the disappearing Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland. Some people think it is visible only when water is sprayed on it from a certain angle, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense, although to be fair it's Area 51, we already have a lot of questions. Ok, so speaking about the Airstrip, I'm kind of led on in to this at number 8, we have space planes. I am almost certain that there are top secret aeroplanes being developed at Area 51. There have been numerous rumours about spy planes and space planes for years. Back in 1989, people began believing that Area 51 was home to a super fast cutting edge spy plane called Aurora. They believed it could travel three times the speed of a Concorde, which is Fast. In recent years, strange sonic booms have been heard across the world, especially in London and New York. They have been linked to secret Area 51 developments. Now people think that Area 51 is the launch pad of space planes that fly to the stratosphere, so not detected on military radars in order to spy on countries below. Space planes. Coming into number 7, time machines. Has the United States government secretly been working to generate time travel? There have been historic reports of time travellers, example the woman in the Charlie Chaplin movie, the W man. I feel like I've read so many accounts of time travellers in like The Sun and the Daily Mail and I can't even. Everyone seems to dismiss them as like fame hungry or just nut jobs, but maybe they are legit. Maybe they're time travelling through Area 51. Also, has anyone seen the movie Hot Tub Time Machine? Because like, I am sure that there is something fun and bubbly we could add to this top secret project. Ooh, taking a nasty turn at number 6, we have nuclear weapons. Is Area 51 radioactive? It seems that the site has been pegged as a possible location for secret nuclear testing. A lot of people believe that the United States government has carelessly tested nuclear weapons around Area 51. We do know that the government carried out over a thousand nuclear tests between 1945 and 1992. Investigative journalist Annie Jacobson actually uncovered details of a Project 57. She says that nuclear weapons were tested near Area 51 and there was a disastrously lax nuclear cleanup. She claims in her book that nuclear waste was buried in the ground but contaminated Nevada's soil. While the United States is not officially still testing nuclear weapons, some people do think that actually it is still happening just underground, under Area 51. Somebody's taken a leaf out of Kim Jong Un's book, or perhaps he took a leaf out of America's book. Coming in at number 5, we have freeze ray guns and laser weapons. Baba Vanga, the famous seer and blind mystic, predicted that there would be a war in Rome in 2045 using freeze ray guns, which I mean, it does sound kind of cool a bit. Are they being developed here at Area 51? What a question, I mean anything's possible right? A lot of people do actually believe that Area 51 is where the military is creating and testing the next generation of weapons, energy weapons. Some people think that energy weapons are being tested, including freeze ray guns and laser weapons that could vaporize people in seconds. Listen, just a theory, but maybe Area 51 is home to freaking sharks with freaking lasers on their heads, just like Dr. Evil wanted. Coming into number 4, we have Prison. A hidden military base from the 1860s was found underneath Alcatraz. So, what if an Alcatraz? Alcatraz style prison is under Area 51. Who's detained there? Allegedly, former Area 51 employee Bob Lazar claimed to have been a scientist at Area 51. Now, he was reported to have seen small grey.
grey extraterrestrials being interrogated by men in white lab coats. Another whistleblower known as Victor sensationally appeared on radio airwaves in 1997 to say that he had witnessed alien interrogation when he worked there too. So is there a top secret alien prison under Area 51? Or perhaps it's just a regular prison but for like really bad people. Okay. Sure, at number three, this is what we've all been waiting for, and I'm happy to bring it to you. We have them aliens and their technology and their spaceships. So, where do I even start? Area 51 is absolutely synonymous with aliens. Long before Barack Obama confirmed that there is an Area 51, people were suspecting it to be the case anyway. Since the 1940s, alien conspiracy theories surrounding Area 51 have existed, especially following the Roswell crash. People believe that the crash was covered up and that the wreckage was taken to Area 51 for testing. A number of former employees have come forward to share their experience with grey aliens at Area 51, and others, including former Air Force worker Charles Hall, have claimed that tall white aliens frequent the site and park their spaceships in the mountainside. Hall also claimed that the aliens are in cahoots with the United States government and that they'd share secrets with them and technological information. This is also echoed in an expose by Robert Scott Lazar, who claims to have worked at reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology during his time at Area 51. He also claims that the government and aliens have been working together for thousands of years. Wider claims do say that actually the government is crossbreeding aliens with humans and creating a whole new race of engineered people, which is wild. Coming into number two, we have the Illuminati, or the One World Government headquarters. So there have been Illuminati conspiracies and One World Government theories floating around out there for a long time. A lot of people think that the human race is governed by a group of elites that secretly manipulate goings on around the world. Conspiracist David Icke even believes that these world leaders are reptilians. A lot of theories are merged into one here, so whatever name we want to give this group of elite, could their headquarters be housed? beneath Area 51. Some people would think that Denver Airport could be a possible location for the secret HQ. The reason being is that it's supposed to have a bunch of secret underground tunnels and it kind of seems convenient that airplanes fly in and out all of the time so smuggling in the world elite wouldn't be too suspicious. But at the same time, it is for the most part a public place so perhaps the secret Illuminati HQ is out there in the desert. Finally, coming into number one, we have diseases and cures. If this is true, then this is very scary for the wider implications. Some people suspect that Area 51 sits on a giant laboratory in which diseases are being fostered for use in biological warfare. But people also think that they have cures for a lot of diseases plaguing the nation, including cancer. That's right, some people think that the United States government is hiding the cure for cancer in Area 51, but will not release it because healthcare makes them so much money. In fact, healthcare is worth over $7 trillion. In 2019, at a rally, Donald Trump claimed that he was basically there with the cure for cancer, and if he gets re elected, he'll roll it out. How? Well, maybe he'll take a trip to Area 51 and release it from the vault, but I don't think so. Going off on number 10 now, we have the beginning. When it comes to explaining to aliens everything about humans, the start is, well, a good place to start. This image shows conception, a sperm cell fusing with an egg cell, which will eventually divide and become a fetus and then a human just like you and me. Now, when I first saw this, I worried that the aliens might not really understand what scale we're talking on here. What if they think the sperm cell is the size of a truck and the egg cell is the size of a football stadium. They may think we're giants, but no. Luckily, scientists are a lot smarter than me. On the previous slide, they explained the sizes of egg and sperm cells to show the aliens that they are very, very, very small. Coming out number nine now, we have the location. This image explains to any reasonably intelligent aliens where exactly our solar system is. We've also included a picture of our nearest neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. It's hoped that this information on the slide will be enough for the aliens to figure out where we are. Of course, this is all pretty cool, but some people are a bit worried. Many feel that we shouldn't be so open about broadcasting our location to advanced life in the universe. If human history is anything to go by, technologically advanced groups rarely visit others just to say hello. Do you think people are just being paranoid with this or should we keep our voices down in this big bad universe of ours? Moving on to number eight now, we have the Taj Mahal. This is one of the most iconic buildings 
ever created. Located in India, it was built as a mausoleum for the Mughal Emperor in the 1600s. So why exactly does NASA think the aliens should want to see it? Well, they actually included a number of iconic buildings such as the Great Wall of China and the Sydney Opera House. Perhaps they're trying to show that buildings are important to us. After all, they are quite a uniquely human thing. No other animals build buildings like we build buildings. We absolutely love it. They become important to us, especially if they are grand, old, or have some historic importance to them. Will the aliens understand this, or will they find our love of buildings a strange or even primitive quality? At number seven now, we have the womb. This is quite an interesting one. It shows the outline of a male and female couple, and the female is pregnant. This is obviously an attempt to show the aliens how we reproduce. This might seem obvious to us, but you have to remember, extraterrestrial life may have a completely different way of reproducing. They might be horrified that humans grow in a womb for nine months. Probably not horrified, but you get the idea. This slide is just one of many that attempt to show the aliens how we procreate, how we are born, and how we grow. Moving on to number six now, we have the animals. NASA included a number of pictures of animals on the disc. This is one of my favorites, showing wildebeest and zebras drinking alongside each other in Africa. Now, you may think it's strange to include pictures of other animals when this is about us and aliens contacting each other. However, NASA felt that it wouldn't be a true representation of Earth if they didn't include other animals too. After all, we may dominate this planet, but we're not the only ones who call it home. The pictures of animals show that we are not alone on this planet and that perhaps we even speak on their behalf if it ever comes to a point of contact with an alien civilization. Next up at number five now, we have home. That's the name of this picture taken by NASA in the 1970s. At the bottom, you can see they've included the diameter of Earth as 12,756 kilometers. This is the only full picture of Earth that was included. What will the aliens make of it? Some other slides explain what our atmosphere is made of. I'm sure they can figure out that the white bits are clouds and the blue bit is our ocean. Hopefully they know it's water. Do you think so too? Also, this brings me back to our previous point. I know some of you are a bit paranoid about alien invasions, thanks Hollywood. If so, do you think it's a good idea to include pictures of our planet and what exactly it's made of? Could that be used against us? I personally don't think we have to worry, but it's quite an interesting idea. Moving on to number four now, we have eating. Here is a man enjoying a bunch of grapes. It may look like nothing to you, but it might help aliens understand a lot about us. The universe is a big place. Aliens may be so different to us that we can't even imagine what they would be like. However, it's safe to assume that they, like us, need energy. To live is to consume energy in some form or another. Aliens might have their own unique way of getting their energy, but for us, it's food. This picture helps explain that humans and many other creatures on Earth consume food for energy so that we can survive. Hopefully they don't think we only eat grapes though. That would get pretty boring quite quickly. Next up, at number three now, we have tectonic. In this image, we can see three different Earths. The top and bottom might look unfamiliar to you. The top one is what Earth looked like when it was one and a half billion years old. All of the continents were just kind of mushed together. Tectonic activity in the Earth's crust sent them apart from each other, drifting and crashing into each other until they resembled the middle picture. That's what Earth looks like for us today. And there's a little human hand there to show that this is the era of Earth we humans live in. The bottom one shows what Earth will look like in a further 10 million years. This is based on scientific predictions. Now you may think this is a bit redundant, but just wait, Voyager 1 could be traveling in space for millions of years. Maybe aliens won't find it for another 10 million years. Will humans even still be around then? Perhaps. Either way, our map of what the Earth will look like by then may be far more accurate than what it looks like now. Moving on to number two now, we have sport. This is a picture of sprinters in a race at the 1976 Olympics held in Montreal. So why did NASA want aliens to see this one? Well, sport and competition have always been a huge part of the human story. It was competition that made us spread across the planet, and now it's sport that brings us together to compete in various events. It's a common bond that all human cultures seem to share in one way or another. This is also a contrast to the images of war and trouble that we often see on the news. This is NASA trying to show aliens that despite our differences, we are more similar than not. Call it the Olympic spirit or even the human spirit. It's a good picture to include that they can understand understand what exactly is going on. And finally now at number one, we have the cars. This picture was taken from a busy road in India. There are a few others like it that show humans with their cars. It seems like NASA wanted to show the aliens that we build things to do better jobs than we ever could. If they recognize
recognize that we constructed these cars, they may see in us a desire to reach beyond the physical limitations of our own human bodies. Perhaps this is something they will recognize in themselves too. Any aliens that find Voyager 1 will have to have plucked it from space. If that happens, there's a very good chance they will have had to use machinery just like our cars and space rockets. After all, we don't know of any living thing that can survive in space by itself forever. Perhaps they can though. Perhaps they see our obsession with machines as nothing more than filling a hole in the human condition. Starting us off with number 10, our secrets kill. In 1994, the US Air Force and the EPA were sued by the widows of Walter Kaza and Robert Frost. The two contractors died while working at Area 51 because they were present when massive quantities of unknown chemicals were being burned in open pits at Groom. The men were never told what the chemicals were, they weren't even allowed to bring gas masks from home or any external equipment, just gloves. They sustained liver, skin and respiratory injuries and that soon led to their deaths. Biochemists analyzing the men's biopsies found high levels of industrial toxins in their tissue that are rarely ever seen in humans. Of course the women lost the case because President Clinton made Area 51 exempt from all environmental disclosure laws and because the government never actually had to reveal what the chemicals were so the case had insufficient evidence. I find this so unfair, it's like the case of the population of Chernobyl, like the people have to know what they're being exposed to, what they've gone into, so they can make their own informed decisions, you can't just put people's lives on the line. Come on people, let's think. Coming in at number 9 is the employee route. This is one of the most secret places in the world. The contractors there don't even know what materials they're working with. No civilian has ever been inside. Presidents in the past have even requested to know more like the place is an enigma. And if you thought the employees working there would at least have the real tea, well you're still half wrong again. National security wanted to make 100% sure Area 51's employees wouldn't ever be able to make it to work without a roadmap, so they came up with a plan. Plan. Workers show up to a certain spot in Las Vegas every day and actually get flown into work so they can't remember how to get there. Forget the employees, they had to minimize other people's suspicion and curiosities as well. I mean employees could easily be followed so they prevented it completely. Imagine being flown into work every day, usually I'd say what a life but in this case I'm really not too sure. And to top it all off, all employees are paid in cash only and have to sign their receipt with a fake name since they're part of a black project. At number 8 we have Dreamland. Before the site gained all this fame with Area 51, it was actually called Dreamland. Weird, I know. I only know of one other Dreamland and it's a water park, not an alien conspiracy site. When it was Dreamland, there weren't all these spooky, freaky stories surrounding it. It didn't make people run for the hills like it does now. It was initially called Dreamland because it was meant to be a quiet place where workers could do their job, mind their own business and not be called out for being aliens. I don't know whose idea it was to call it Dreamland, maybe they thought all their dreams would come true if they got all these military jets right, or these nuclear weapons, or if they dominated other planets, I don't know. That's why they did all this testing, right? But even then I still don't see the link between military training and aircraft testing and Dreamland. It's probably Dreamland for someone, but that's definitely not me. The filling on number 7 slot is the landing strip, and we can thank Google Earth Images for this one. Back in 2016, it revealed a strange mile long landing strip located in Area 6, which is about 12 miles northeast of Area 51. There's also a cluster of hangars at the end of the runway, which is quite odd, and if you don't know what a hangar is, it's basically a building that houses aircrafts. No one knows what's being tested there and why the hell they have a mile long runway. It looks sus and based on my previous video about what the government is hiding in Area 51, this is the fully functional alien airport I was talking about. Check that video out if you haven't already. Now at number 6 is Paradise Ranch. So of course there are a number of employees that work at Area 51 and regardless of how high up you were or how much you enjoyed your job, living in the middle of nowhere in the desert is boring. During its heyday when it was a testing site for the U-2 aircraft, an engineer called Kelly Johnson tried to rebrand the area to try and convince more government workers to move there with their families, so he came up with Paradise Ranch. Far from paradise, it was actually just an area filled with rows of trailers for families to live in. That is literally it. No amenities even, I mean at least build a grocery store or a pool. I don't know how they named it Paradise Ranch, that's the biggest fake news if you ask me. And either way, clearly the ghost town trailer area remained a ghost town trailer area. Even the picture of it just gives me the creeps. Coming in at 
at number 5 is the picture. There are barely any aerial pictures of Area 51 at all, and in 1974, astronauts on Skylab 4 were taking pictures of Earth for a larger project, and they happened to take a picture of Area 51. Honestly, you can't even see anything in the picture but the lake and terrain, but soon after, a memo went around to them saying they had specific instructions to not do this and that this was the only location which had such an instruction. They want to keep this so under wraps. The CIA considers Area 51 to be the most sensitive spot on Earth. So apparently, now we can't even take pictures of it from space. I mean, can the CIA control what we do in space? I, I, I don't think so. At number 4 is The Fire. Most of you know Tom DeLonge as the lead singer of Blink 182, but what you may not know is that he's now an alien hunter. A few years ago, he went camping near Area 51 and things got real. During one night, he woke up at around 3 am and his body felt weird. It felt like static electricity was coursing through his body, and when he finally opened his eyes, he realized at least his fire was still going, but there also seemed to be noises coming from outside his tent. And it wasn't just one sound, it sounded like it was coming from 20 people. Immediately he was thinking, right, I'm about to get abducted, here they are, they're not gonna hurt me, they're just talking He tried to listen in on what they were saying, but he coincidentally passed out and woke up to find he had no idea what had happened in the last three hours. And having done a ton of research on the topic, Tom knew this chatter was involved in every alien contact or abduction story, so I mean he was this close. Filling our number 3 slot is the battle, and hold on because it's definitely not the battle you're thinking of. The Sheehan family has owned Groom Mine, which is a segment of Area 51 for more than 125 years. The US Air Force has been trying to buy the land off them for a very long time, offering them $5.2 million for more than 400 acres of land. They're adamant on kicking them out because even though they've been escorting the family into the space for decades, they can no longer ensure their safety. The base runs 24 7 and sometimes they even cancel missions when the family comes out, which stop being financially viable. On the other side, the family claimed it's not the tests that pose a threat, it's the military themselves. Bullets were even fired around their property in the 40s in an attempt to get them to leave. Family members have even been held at gunpoint on their own property which the Air Force denies and the family even tried to sue them but ran out of money. They no longer own the land that generations had worked so hard to obtain and I think that puts into perspective that when Area 51 is concerned, anything goes. Now at number 2 is the humming. Back in 1965, Charlie Arendelle was working as a security guard at a mine near Area 51 and on two consecutive nights he was told to shoot anything he saw on site. Him and a few other guards were driven to another airstrip and told to guard it. The first night they all heard a weird almost muted humming sound for half an hour and when the sound stopped, the shifts ended as well. But as they were leaving they saw a huge circular camouflage tent on the runway surrounded by armed troops with their backs to it. The next night they heard the sound again but this time the tent was nowhere to be found. Now I can't confirm what Charlie saw because I wasn't there but I feel like he was bused to the mile long airstrip also known as the functioning alien airport and was told to protect the vessel as well as potentially kill anyone or anything that comes off of it. And finally at number 1 is the BBC invasion. Breaking into area 51 can end up in many ways. Number 1 the camo dudes can just shoot you. Number two, you can get fined for a thousand dollars and go to jail for six months. Or three, they sacrifice you to the aliens because you've seen too much. Never thought jail would sound good until now. Either way, this team of journalists from BBC learned this the hard way when in 2012 they broke into the site looking for a juicy story. Anything for the team, my friends. After filming for around 30 minutes, one of the crewmen knocked on a door and eight camo dudes, which is their official name by the way, I'm actually not bullshit came out with assault rifles and forced the crew to the ground. They all had to lie face down with guns to their backs for three hours until the sheriff came. All their phones, film equipment, microphones, everything were taken away from them and that's not even the worst part. Amongst the many threats the crew received, one was exceptionally scary. Son, we could make you disappear and your body will never be found. And I honestly don't doubt they could do that for a second. Mm. 